There we go. Now we're live. My computer had to think for a little bit to see, hey, do I want to wake up and work this morning or am I laying in bed? Well, good morning. It is Nick at 9. It's Friday morning. We're going to be in Isaiah 14. Good morning, Tabitha. How are you? It is July 24th, 2020. We are about to close out yet another month of 2020, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Been reading some funny things on Facebook memes or whatever, and one of them said, I can't believe I stayed up till midnight to welcome this year in. And the other one said, I'm not going to stay up, uh, you know, December 31st. I'm not staying up to see the new year come in. I'm staying up to make sure this one goes out. So I thought those are kind of funny. So good morning, Vicki. Good morning, Patty. How are you guys doing this morning? You made it this morning. I did too. It was kind of iffy. I didn't know it could have gone anyway. Either way there. Morning, morning. Good morning, Brenda. How are you? Hope you guys are having just a great morning. <clears throat> Jackie, hello, hello. Glad that you are here with us. If you didn't see, we will be in Isaiah chapter 14 for our devotion this morning. So if you have your Bibles, you want to turn there with me, be more than welcome. So I did a thing. I had a good friend. I believe my friend Mike Turley bought me this sticker, and so I put it on the front of my Bible. Try to get that. There it is. So it's a bear holding a pineapple, right? There's bear, fruit. Get it? Get it? Because that's, that's the whole purpose for us to bear fruit in our lives. So I thought, where am I going to put that that I'm going to see it? And I thought, why not better on the front of my Bible so that every time I open it, I know that it's not about... Just trying to fill this mind full of more stuff, but it's an equipping to bear fruit in my life. So I've had a few people like, what's that on the front of your Bible? It's a bear holding a pineapple. That's what that is. <laughs> so anyway, so if you have a bear pineapple sticker, throw it on the front of your Bible. Let's bear fruit. Doug, Barb, and Mary are watching this morning. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Cynthia, Bradley, Joyce, good morning. We got a full crowd. We got a full crowd. It is TGIF. Oh, man. I'm excited that you guys are here. Oh, I got a cup of coffee. Hope you have a cup of coffee. Annie, good morning. I'm the only one up in the house. I got two dogs over here passed out on the couch. I think one of them kind of looked up at me when I started, like, what are you doing? It is too early for this owner, human. It is too early for this. So they're passed out. And I think every kid and my wife are sleeping, which is good. We were up. We were up late last night, so it's good. Kip, good morning. Good morning, star. Gary Conrad. <laughs> Nick at night this morning. I know. They... They moved my time. There's no more night. Shirley, good morning. James. Oh, that's JR. I'm just, I'm just reading names. Oh, hold on, I know that. Karen, good morning. How are you? It is beautiful this morning. I let the dogs out a couple times, and it's warm. We went swimming yesterday. Not a bad day. Roseanne Tama Jones, good morning to you. Randy Baker, good morning to you and Judy. Deb Lyons, good morning, good morning. Hello, Joy, how are you? Hope all is well for you. We still got a few minutes. We'll let people roll in here. So, I got to be honest. What is really nice is I didn't have to fix my hair this morning. I just woke up, got a cup of coffee, got my laptop out, got my Bible, kind of got set up here in the dining room. And there was not one thought of, do I need to check my hair before? Because, you know, the rest of the guys, they all have to do that. You know, Sean's down there. He's pasting down all that. And Daryl's got to comb and brush it. It's kind of a nice thing. Good morning, Susie. Debbie Huntsman, so glad that you guys are here. Good morning, Sherry Wright. Hope all is well for you. Glad that you are joining us. <clears throat> 
We are in Isaiah chapter 14. It's going to start a little, I would say, uh, what's the words we like to use now? Deep, maybe heavy, but it ends great. I hope, I hope it does. So, uh, so we'll start in Isaiah 14. Uh, we might read a little Ephesians 4 this morning, uh, but that'll be, that'll be our morning. So, good morning, Tammy Jordan. Do you got Troy with you, Jed? Is he out working? You got you to gotta keep him busy. Good morning, good morning. Oh. As always, taking any kind of prayer request. Um, I've already been texting and talking to one of our G3 members who's on deployment in Kuwait right now. So that's been kind of fun. So we're going to be uh, a young man named Crew that is faithfully serving our country in Kuwait right now. He is with the uh, Air Guard. Um, if I'm remembering, maybe if some of my G3 members are here to correct me, I believe he's a, a mechanic. That's what I'm thinking. So that's, that's what he is doing in Kuwait right now. I think he's on a four-month um, deployment. We actually have a couple people that we know that are on deployment together there, so be praying for them. Troy is firefighting today. Ooh, that's just going outside. You got to put on a firefighter suit just to go outside. That's, it, it was pretty warm. It was pretty warm. Well, tell him we are praying for him for his safety as he serves our community. Cheryl, how are you? Good morning. Glad everyone is showing up this morning. Charlene, good morning. Glad that you're here with us. It is happy Friday. There's just something about Friday. I don't know what it is, you know. There's just something about Friday. I think I talked last week about, I remember the old 90s TV shows, the TGIFs. Loved those. You know, teachers were happier at school. The, I was happier. Recess was more fun. I don't know what it was. It was this Friday. Well, I think we'll go ahead and, I can tell, I can always tell by the amount of coffee I have left in my cup when it's time to get started. It works at Nick at night and it works at Nick in the morning. Well, we will go ahead and get started with our morning devotion. Again, we're going to start in uh, Isaiah chapter 14. There is this really unique passage where... You know, God speaking through Isaiah is speaking to Lucifer. And and then and when you look at prophecy, a lot of times there's always a near fulfillment of prophecy and there's a far uh, fulfillment, a far prophecy or whatever. Uh, we see that. Uh, I just talked about that at Sunday Night Bible Study. Uh, we see that in Daniel where... Um, the prophet will be writing to the context in which he is living, but also uh, he uh, the words not just applicable, but he's directly writing to something that will happen much later. And uh, nine times out of ten, we're talking about Christ and the kingdom and and his return or anything like that. So that's the far um, fulfillment of prophecy. But in this passage, you know Isaiah is speaking in the near to king of Babylon, you know, that that is uh, on his throne, and we know about Babylon was just, oh, just a sin city of a nation that came in and destroyed. Uh, we know that Assyria came in 722, and then Babylon came in 586, roughly, uh, and took over um, Assyria, what our, Assyria already took over Israel. I said Assyria, not Siri. My phone just blinked at me. Uh, and then Babylon came in and took over uh, Israel, which was already destroyed by Assyria, and then took over Judah. And so he's writing in the context to that king of Babylon right there. But there's a far fulfillment, or there's a, 
deeper under uh, thing to, to what he's writing, and he's speaking to Lucifer. And so, verse 13, I'm going to start in 12, actually. Um, he's, he's speaking, he says, How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. And, or some of your uh, versions will say morning star. And, and that's what Lucifer was. He was an angel uh, of worship. Um, and he, he was this bright morning star. And he says, but how you have fallen from heaven, how you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. And so in, in the text, he's talking to the king of Babylon, but in the further, he's talking to Lucifer, Satan. Verse 13, and this is, this is what caused his fall. You said in your heart, and there's five I will statements here. He said, I will, so you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mounts of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will make myself like the most high. There are these five I will statements that show the sin that came in to this angel of worship, came into his heart. He wanted God's position. He wanted his praise. He wanted to be like God. <clears throat> and say, okay, Nick, what does this mean for us this morning? At the root of all of our sin, no matter what it is, at the root of our sin is always self-sufficiency, self-reliance, that it's that we put ourselves at the center of it, just like Lucifer was here. We want control of our life, and, and we want our will to be done. We can be so quick to kind of have the same response towards God that Lucifer did here. So here, God is speaking through the prophet, and he details the sin of his heart, and the cause him to be cut down to the ground, you know. So this is this is the effect that this sin had on him. That, and we and we know that that God threw him down. And it's because of these I will statements. He wanted the same position. He wanted the same praise. He wanted the same power that God has. And we this morning, kind of talking about, we can be guilty of a very similar sin that we want control of our lives, that we want to, we, we can be quick, and I'm so guilty of this, to make myself a little higher than what I really am, and we kind of make God a little lower than what he should be in our life. You know, it's like, okay, I, yeah, God's in my life, you know, I, I pray before I eat, might even do a little morning devotions, um, go to church on Sunday, but if I was going to be honest, I live most of the rest of my life with a little or no thought of God. You know, where he wants to be center um, and the forefront of our minds at all times. And so we make ourselves a little higher that, you know, we're a little bit better than what we really think we are. And, and we kind of drop God down a little bit. And, and we can become so easily convinced of our own abilities or resources. You know, we might even say things like, oh, I don't even want to trouble God with that. It seems so little or so petty. And, and what's so hard is we begin to doubt and maybe even distrust the provisions of Christ, you know, because we're, we're so reliant on our own abilities or resources. And we start saying things like, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I need, and I, and we're having that same kind of, I will responses towards God that Lucifer did. But the whole time Christ is saying, no, 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 it's not what you need to do. It's what I need to do in your life. And so we have these two things that are fighting in our lives. And let's take it a little further. You know, it's like, what am I striving for? And what do I put up with in my life? You know, so am I striving for more of Jesus? And I struggle with the burden of sin in my life? That, that sounds like the normal Christianity, right? We are our normal faith. We need to strive for Christ and we struggle with sin. But a lot of times, sometimes I find myself and I'm striving for sin. It could be of just pride and my ego and arrogance, and I'm struggling with the burden of Christ in my life. Yeah, it sounds maybe a little crass, a little harsh, but sometimes it kind of be, can be true that it's hard for us to 
you know, to where we at the at the core of it. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we struggle with that. It's like, why isn't God's thoughts like my thoughts? And why aren't our thoughts like his thoughts? You know, because we want things done our way. And all of this. So what's the what's the the beauty of it all? It shows the need for grace, mercy, and love and truth of Christ in our life. And so in Ephesians 4, it says, put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life. So take that off like old, dirty clothes, right? That's old Nick, and it's corrupt through, uh, the verse says, you know, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. So take off that old former of life. It's all corrupt. It's all about your desires, your I will statements, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new self right? Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, we all understand what it's like to get like a new outfit and we put it on and we just, you just feel good, right? Like, can we just, you, you just like, this fits well. I don't look like a, a you know, an elephant. Like, I, I you know, you, you, there's a little bit of confidence in that. We get that. But think about this. When we take off that old self and we put on the likeness, it's our new self, and it's created in the likeness of God and true righteousness, and we put on the righteousness of Christ. That when God sees us, he doesn't see our sin, he doesn't see our, our I will and our control and, and our deceitful desires. He sees the righteousness, the perfectness of Christ. He sees in us, because us by faith, Lord, take this old off of me and give me new. And that's how we are a new creation, not just new what we're putting on, but it's a whole new self. It's not this mask that we put on. It's not a, a facade on the outside, but it's actually something that starts internally. But it's a new self that we put on. We're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so what, what, I, what I encourage you and what I try to strive for is when I see these little I will kind of statements or I centered statements in my life at the core of them, at the very heart of them and my sin of, of distrusting and, and, and trying to do life apart from God, these little I will statements, what it's telling me, what it's screaming out to me is this is where I need the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, the truth of Christ in my life. And so, and so when I find myself, uh, and it can be little things, oh, I just need to get school done, or I just need to get this uh, project done for work or whatever it is. It's like, even in those little things, Christ wants to, to come in and, and be the center of that. And so it, it might seem kind of crazy that, that he is so good that even the little things of our lives that we think, why would God care about this assignment that I have to turn in or this project at work or, you know, this, whatever it is. And it's like, that just shows how good God is to us, that even the little things in our life, man, I want to be right there in the middle of it. I want to be right there with you. And so we're going to pray this morning. And I just encourage you, take off that old, put on the new in the likeness of God, and we can, never, we can never go to the throne too often. We can never go to the feet of Jesus too often. We can never ask for his, to be dependent upon him too much. We can never ask for his presence, his provision, his power in our life too much. He will never look at us and say, you know what, Nick, you're, you're burning through grace a little too much. Like normal allotment, like everybody gets this much grace every day to make it through their normal little days of life. Jesus is this overflowing fountain of love, grace, and mercy, and we can never go to him too much. There's nothing too big. There's nothing too small that we can't take to him. And there's, and when we can't, too often go to the grace and the mercy and the love of God and to his presence. And so continually strive after him and not just, you know, bow before him and, 
and kneel at the altar of our heart. Let's camp out there. You know, like those guys on a, on a Black Friday where they're trying to get into Best Buy because the TVs are cheap and there's the line out and they're camping out there because it's too good of a deal. Let's just camp out on the throne of grace because it's just too good of a deal that we can, we can surrender our failures, our faults, and he gives us his righteousness, his grace, and his love. It's too good of a deal. I say we camp out. I'm bringing, I'm bringing an umbrella, a bag chair, a drink. Who's with me? Well, let's pray this morning. Any prayer requests that you guys have, please know that we are praying for you. All you have to do is just let us know. We have the prayer line. We still have the digital prayer card on the website. You can call out to Grace during normal business hours, prayer line, after hours, any of these devotions. We want to be praying for you. And so please just let us know. Is And again, as much detail and as less detail as you're comfortable with, it could, it could literally just say unspoken. And we're not going to pry you and, no, you got to tell us what this is about. God knows. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows what's going on in your heart. And, and, and honestly, that just one word, unspoken, is enough uh, for us to be praying for you. So please know that we are. Uh, but let's go to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you. And Lord, I pray that we would just camp out here in your grace, in your mercy, in your love, in your truth, that whatever we have going on today, whatever the just the little normal Monday things of our uh, life are today, that you would be at the center of it, Lord. That we would do nothing without your, your provision and your presence in our life. And Father, I even ask that we would have small divine appointments with with people in who you're working in their hearts in our community. That we would, and that you would use us, that we would be useful vessels, Lord. That by our words, by our actions, we could point people to you so that they would experience the same grace and forgiveness and salvation and the same new life that we have in you, that they would experience that same thing that we experience, Lord. So, Father, we just we surrender to you. Renew our spirit. Transform our minds and humble us, Lord, by your grace. And give us courage, Lord, and boldness. That even in those small things of our life, even in the big things of our life, we will follow you in them. That we would surrender them to you. That we want you at the very center of it, Lord. So, Father, we love you. We trust you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Well, we are praying for you guys. Thank you so much for taking some of your Friday morning to tune in to little old Nick Pierce. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Saw a couple prayer requests coming through. Definitely praying for you, Tammy. I oh, love that. Making it count. Love that star. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great Friday morning. Um, as always, uh, service will be uh, 8 o'clock and 1030. Still trying to get used to those new times. I'm trying to throw out the old ones. But yeah, 8 o'clock, 1030. Um, still having uh, the masks when we come in. Um, and then always, you know, if you feel uncomfortable to just to be out and about and around a lot of people, uh, services will be live streamed and, and definitely want you to uh, attend and engage in those. Would love to have you uh, for those. Um, and again, if there's anything that we can be doing, praying for you, uh, maybe just need to talk, please know that we are here um, and available to you. So uh, just give us a call and, and we'd love to come alongside you. And, and whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, uh, whatever high mountain, low valley it is, you know, we just want to, we, we're just locking arms together um, and just living this life for Jesus. So love you guys. Hope you have a great Friday. Hope you have a great weekend and we will see you Sunday. Take care.